The next company, or rather its engineers, are Bezos early adopters and pretty advanced users and contributors. So it's no surprise that challenges they're solving are also quite advanced. Please welcome Bono from Blue River Technology, a company building intelligent machinery and revolutionizing agriculture. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Bano Kaiti, and I'm the lead DevOps engineer from Blue River Technology. And I'm here to talk about how we use remote execution in Bazel to run cross-compile builds and tests. So here I'm going to talk about I'm going to give a little bit, little overview about our application and then how we use Bazel to build it and running Bazel tests on ARM64 targets. And then uh, I'll talk about how we solve the problem of speed um, and uh, use cross compilation tests using the uh, remote execution. So let's, uh, without further ado, let's jump into the um, topics. So, uh, we develop a robotics application, which is mostly written in C++. It has many modules, um, you know, which share data between um, between them using a runtime shared memory. And um, as the application uses machine learning, it is very time sensitive because it tries to analyze the target and then take a decision and also perform an action. So, and then the application itself is a single artifact, which includes everything, uh, including kernel, drivers, kernel, operating system, and we flash this single artifact. So this entire thing is built in uh, Bazel. So uh, coming to the target environment, it is a customized NVIDIA ARM64 GPU with, a, you know, it is integrated with a lot of uh, embedded systems and other hardware devices, like, uh, you know, cameras, uh, GPS module, and then nozzles to spray. Um, and there are other uh, in embedded devices which are integrated with. So um, that's the um, target environment we have. Um, then I just want to, I don't want to talk more about monorepo versus, uh, you know, microservices here, but I just want to give an overview how we maintain our repo. So we have all our modules uh, in a single repo, and we also have Bazel tools and other dependencies like tool chains and Bazel rules which are forked into our repo and we maintain it uh, ourselves for consistency. And we also have packaging, deploying scripts, configuration scripts and everything in a single repo. And um, it, basically I can just say that this simplified our code review process and dependency management a lot. So next, uh, uh, Bazel builds. I mean, of course, uh, being part of this meetup, uh, obviously we use uh, only Bazel to build and test our application. Uh, this one is a, a huge build. Um, normally, uh, without any uh, remote execution and sandboxing, it used to take around you know four to five hours to build the entire thing. But uh, with the uh, remote execution and the sandboxing, uh, we reduced it a lot. I'm going to talk about the speed and uh, the time we saved uh, in the later slides, uh, but. Um, this has, um, we also have like dependency hosted in our local build environment so that we don't download it uh, uh, from the internet or, you know, cause a lot of network bandwidth. Um, and also we run tests on ARM64 and AMD64 uh, based on the test case, or we also run some GPU uh, test cases. So uh, we cross compile the ARM64 targets on AMD64. Um, and then the final effect, like I said, it's a huge image. A compressed image and it is flashable. Uh, to do all this, we also have a remote execution setup. Um, basically, you know, um, before this, we had a lot of problems, but now, like, thanks to Ulf uh, Adams, who is part of this meetup and his team, that uh, with Inchflow, we uh, saved a lot of cost on infrastructure as well as maintenance. Um, it simplified a lot for us. Uh, right now we have, uh, uh, sorry, I'm going to show you the diagram. Right now we have uh, um, workers, Inchflow workers, which are the remote executors on cloud as well as in our private network. And both both of them talk to uh, each other. Uh, the, the local machines are ARM64 machines, which are low on uh, resources. Uh, but using this Inchflow uh, thing, we, we were able to speed up the boots. 
Um, so let's uh, talk about why we need to run uh, tests on target platform. I mean, we can simply run an AMD64, but that's not enough for various reasons. Like I said, uh, the entire kernel the operating system is custom built, and this is very specific in environment. And like you can see in the image, that's a, a real product. Um, we also have uh, models. This is a machine learning and uh, you know AI application. So we use models uh, to analyze the targets. So we need the accuracy. The accuracy be run accuracy of running the uh, uh, or using the models on AMD64 and ARM64 are a lot different. So we have to run on the tar target environment. And of course, we have GPU tests. Uh, we have to integrate our, uh, you know, the platform with the embedded systems and then test it because a lot of test cases depend on the other devices too and their um, network connections like CAN and stuff. Um, and then we also have to uh, test the load on the hardware, uh, which is customized. So for various reasons, we have to test the platform on the uh, on the real target environment. So uh, while doing this, we had many challenges with ARM64. The Because of the low resource and the type of uh, hardware we use, the builds and tests are very slow. And sometimes the ARM64 machines, they crash running the build. For example, a four hour build uh, can take up to eight hours and then crash and we have to restart the build. And that happens like uh, frequently. And then uh, we want to run our builds like sanitizer builds uh, using various modes in Bazel. Um, and we run them nightly. Running them without remote execution was very slow. We were not able to run them. And then um, we also have a UI component where uh, we use Node.js and Rules Docker. Uh, compatibility of those uh, tool chains and rules are not, uh, you know, pretty, pretty much in the basal. I think uh, uh, we were limited to not run uh, those rules on basal. We we used to build it separately, but now uh, with the cross compilation, uh, we were we are able to build it on AMD sixty four for ARM sixty four and use them. And then um, yeah, there was another major. Uh, Blocker, where in Bazel you can run tests on only uh, the platform you built on. So there was no option in the Bazel uh, parameters or Bazel uh, tool to build on one platform and run on another platform. So we had to patch Bazel to enable that. I think the feature is there. Probably it's not enabled. So we had to patch a Bazel. Uh, and once again, thanks to Ulf and Austin, uh, they helped us uh, patch the Bazel for that. So uh, another big problem is developer workflow, right? So for every change, for every code review, they have to you know, run some tests against the hardware. So this is a normal setup for a developer. Uh, and this is like um, a silo environment. We have to distribute a lot of hardware as well as you know the, the target uh, hardware has to be flashed and a lot of tools has, needs to be installed. So there is no consist consistency between um, one developer versus another. Um, we wanted an immutable uh, way of deploying stuff, but because of the embedded systems and other devices where we can't like image everything um, and flash it, we were not able to achieve that. So uh, it's a lot of, uh, it's expensive uh, to have all these tools for each and every developer. And the workflow was pretty slow because uh, these machines are not even connected to any remote executors. Uh, so that slows down our development a lot. So that was another big bottleneck for us. So uh, I'm gonna show you how the stages were before we had the cross compile test in our build and um, and also after. So like you can see, there are three parallel stages. Uh, each one is for, I think um, they are like independent. We compile on AMD64, we run some tests on AMD64 then we cross compile it and then we package it. And then we again build on ARM64 because we were not able to, uh, you know, uh, run the test against uh, ARM64 when, when it's cross compiled on AMD64. So they were like, it, it's written it there. We build it three times and this takes up to six to eight hours to do it, right? This is before we ran the cross compile test. And of course we did a lot of 
uh, improvements in CI like IO and you know better resources and stuff to reduce the time, but that didn't solve the uh, complete problem. Then after we enable the cross compile test, it has become a simpler uh, build. We build that it once uh, or twice because it's parallel and um, and because we build it on AMD64 for both, it's super fast um, and we build it in the cloud. And then we just uh, added the uh, ARM64 nodes to the Inchflow cluster. So like on the right side, you see AMD64 pool and ARM64 pool. So uh, to the Inchflow cluster, we added the ARM64. So that means we don't have to install Bazel or anything on uh, the ARM64 pool there, or we don't have to worry about any dependencies. We just install the worker node of Inchflow and then attach it to the cluster. And then the entire remote, remote execution takes care of build centers. So that simplified things a lot. And because of the you know uh, cache backed up in S3 and shared between all these nodes, um, you know, the rebuilds were much faster. So uh, to achieve that, uh, we did a lot of things, but I just want to mention a few highlights. Um, what all things we did. Um, so first thing was we uh, have to tag each and every target in our Bazel code uh, to uh, run on ARM64. By default, it is AMD64, but we had to uh, tag it, the first uh, parameter target compatible with. And then there were a lot of sandbox leaks uh, when we are migrating from local execution to remote execution, as well as uh, you know cross compilation, we were able to fix a lot of sandbox leaks. Um, third one is uh, we had to set up uh, GPU permissions so that the user which is executing the build or test has right permissions to execute the GPU test. Um, of course, uh, in Bazel, we have to define two platforms uh, because we have two build platform is AMD64 and the target is uh, ARM64. Um, of course, we have to connect our uh, machines in office to the cloud because our inflow cluster is in cloud. and. Uh, uh, we had to set up those workers, uh, networking and other things. Um, setting up executor pools is just like a label uh, to run against the specified target. And then there were some uh, rules in Bazel which were very specific to um, AMD, and we had to uh, rewrite it or modify it to make them work on ARM64. Uh, the other one is uh, build without bytes and uh, the other remote download output. We wanted to uh, reduce the build time and reduce the network bandwidth. So we only download the final artifact uh, to the local and package it. Uh, rest of the output stays in uh, remote execution. And like I mentioned before, we had to patch the Bazel to run the test against a different platform. So what have we achieved in numbers? So earlier, the build time was somewhere around three hours after um, you know, executing the uh, after executing the build in remote execution, uh, but before that it was more than that. Uh, but from three hours, we reduced it to twenty minutes after the cross compile test. And then, as part of those things, uh, you know, these are um, the cross compile test through Inchflow saved us sixty minutes. Uh, remote execution saved us another sixty minutes. Uh, NVMe, uh, we had to move our build uh, instances to NVMe volumes uh, because we it was high on IO and that saved uh, 30 minutes. And then uh, there was a, uh, in our build scripts, we used to run the Bazel server inside a container that bringing up server inside a container used to take a lot of time, but that saved another 10 minutes. So with all these things, I think we have simpler builds now and very stable. I think last time I touched the infrastructure, um, was like three months ago. We had a stable version of Inchflow and our scripts, and I never had to touch our build scripts or infrastructure. And of course, less maintenance because I don't have to maintain tools on the ARM64 and you know, may, uh, you know, know, look after them when they crash or monitoring, all, the, all those things are gone now. And of course, it saves a lot of dev time because we run this test. Uh, now the developers run the test against the Inchflow cluster, we are able to do that. So they don't have to have their silo environments and set them up and, you know, it also reduces the cost for, you know, distributing this hardware to the individual developers. So yeah, overall it's a, uh, 
it simplified, uh, especially DevOps life a lot at Blue River. And we are very happy we made these choices. And of course, uh, Inflow was one of the main things there. Thank you. I think that's all I got. Um, any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Bono. Glad, glad to be part of that journey with you. Um, I think it's really interesting to see that you've got quite com complex setup and a variety of platforms. So uh, while we wait for questions, uh, I, I'd be curious if you can comment on where is Bazel uh, still uh, kind of lacking support and where you would like to see more in terms of various platform support? Um, I think uh, right now, uh, all the things on the Bazel side, we are pretty much good. Uh, we still are trying to write some uh, rules for Node.js and uh, latest version of NPM. Uh, NPM modules, we are struggling that we still don't have those builds inside Bazel. So probably if we have support on the NPM builds or the typewrite, uh, I don't remember the exact uh, technology there, but typewrite is another thing which are trying to uh, build in Bazel. So probably support there would be nice. And Austin is really working hard on that. Okay, thank you. Uh, related to the patching, uh, you mentioned the patch, I think that Austin and Ulf worked on. There's a question here, will you provide that Bazel patch upstream? Yeah, I think the uh, the PR is already up. Uh, probably it has to be approved and it, it will come out in one or the other release. If, yeah, right. I've seen the PR in the general Bazel repo. All right, Bazel team. <laughs> Yeah, we got you. Uh, okay, and uh, there are two more questions. So, remote execution version two uh, only supports the execution of Unix-like commands. This means that there is no way for you to say in the protocol uh, things like flash this um, and uh, image uh, on the embedded board. So the best way you can do that is schedule test setup data search action on a system that's uh, attached to the board. And the question is, look, so this is bad for security, reproducibility, and other reasons. Do you think that future versions of remote execution would include more native support for running embedded tests? Um, yeah, uh, maybe I'm not the right person to answer this, but we are not using um, Bazel or remote execution to deploy stuff onto our hardware. That's an independent process. Uh, yeah, probably that support is needed, but right now we don't see that use case in our environment because even though if it is through Bazel, uh, before doing that, we need to set the hardware right. So we need like physical access to the machines to set it up right. So we do it in a different way. We have our own tool, inbuilt tool, uh, which we run, it's, a, it's in shell, and that flashes and uh, sets up the entire environment. And then we run the tests against it. All right. Right, yeah, and I I mentioned uh, we can call that shell script probably from Bazel. That's right. All right, thank you. Next question is: um, Someone's been curious if uh, you execute the final uh, the final artifact on local development um, local developers machine, and if you had to do anything special to speed up the process, uh, if it's several gigabytes large. Uh, and also, do you run Bazel server on developer laptops or do you execute Bazel remotely with the fork? So on the developer laptop, yeah, it is very uh, local right now. They build the software using local Bazel server, um, but they run the tests against the, um, the, uh, the remote execution mechanism and only for ARM64 because running AMD 64 tests, uh, they're pretty uh, fast on the local laptops. So only the ARM 64 tests are run against the uh, the remote execution setup where the ARM 64 machines are integrated. Uh, I hope I answered the question. Well, we can still get submissions if there are any clarifications, feel free to post questions. We do have a couple of minutes uh, in this session as well. We have about 10 minutes. So uh, next question is who builds the cross compiler uh, and Bazel config files for it? Is it part of the Bazel release? Uh, no, we use the uh, compiler, which is uh, specified by NVIDIA. It's a GCC Linaro. Uh, we 
we I think we included the rules and tool chains related to that in our scripts. Uh, I don't know if it's generally available in Bazel repo or Bazel uh, world. Probably uh, I'll get back to you on that question. Uh, if I get that through an email, I need to talk to the right people and get the answer for that. All right, and, and you can post the, on the chat as well if you have any more thoughts on any of these questions. Sure. All right, next question. Did you encounter any problems moving the Bazel server outside of the Docker container? Um, lower cache hit rates, for example. No, I think it simplified a lot of things for us, moving outside the Docker container. Uh, actually, our application was in Docker container before. That's the reason we were uh, going that route. But once we got, uh, we made the application multi-process and the supervisor be maintaining it, we moved everything out of uh, uh, the container. And the last thing was move the basins out of the container. It actually simplified a lot of things for us. All right, uh, that that is all the questions we've got. And uh, if there's any more, feel free to connect with Bono. Thank you. Uh, Thanks a lot, Elena.